Hey, you guys. What's going on? Hope everybody's doing okay. Uh, so I'm in the middle of binding a bunch of journals, and I thought really quickly I would show you guys uh, how I'm how I'm doing that. I've I've done videos in the past doing sort of like my lazy binding method. Uh, there's a few things that I'm doing with this series uh, that I just some things that I've changed in my like method and just to make the process run a little smoother and um, and I think and I think it makes them uh, look a little bit nicer. So anyway, <clears throat> so here's what we're going to do uh, or here's what you're going to need if you want to uh, try this method. This is this is what I use always for binding books. It's just a waxed cotton uh, string. Um, comes in all kinds of colors. Um, I get this on Amazon. It runs right around $7 a roll. Um, and I think there's about 300 yards per roll. Maybe a little more than that. I can't remember. I think they were like 300 and maybe 348, 348 yards or something. Um, but anyway, there's lots of different uh, brands on Amazon. I saw some, because I was looking for some different colors, there were some that were like around $5.99 for a little less than 300 yards. Um, lots and lots of different colors. Anyways, I'll put a link in the description to these particular ones. Um, and I think they've got like almost 30 different colors available. Um, this one is almost gone. Like, um, they're, they're pretty fat when, when you get them. And I've had, I've had these for a long time, but anyway, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So some wax cotton, it doesn't have to be wax linen. Um, I know, you know, a lot of you, uh, use wax linen and yes, it's cool and it's strong and all that, but so is the wax cotton. You know, it, it really is. And actually, I think it might be a little bit more durable. Um, anyway, and the nice thing about using the waxed string or cotton or thread or whatever you want to call it is that it's easy to knot and it um, doesn't come untied like some types of uh, other other types of thread and twine and things like that. So anyway, it's really easy to knot, especially if you're doing a three hole uh, pamphlet stitch or a five hole pamphlet stitch. It's, it's just really nice. I'm just doing two holes in these, but they're super sturdy and I am never concerned that, you know, that they're going to come apart. If anybody has ever bought a journal from me, this is the method that I use in a lot of my journals. So anyway, so one other thing is, so these are all two inch spines. Um, and if you're new to making junk journals, uh, I strongly recommend um, making more signatures than, like, <laughs> stitching in signatures can be extremely frustrating if your signatures are too fat, like if there's too many pages in them. And I would say you know, all of my signatures in these journals have maybe 12 to 14 uh, pieces of paper, okay, including the envelope that I'm putting in the center. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go many more than that. So, you know, if you're trying to bind something like that's like a two inch or a two and a half inch spine, just split your paper into more signatures and also it's easier if you split it into an odd number <laughs> um, because that makes it easier for you to mark the center, like you mark the center and then um, the same number on either side of, the, of center. It, it's more difficult to evenly measure out uh, six than it is seven. I don't, it's hard to explain why, but it just is. Anyway. So I don't normally use a template for punching my holes, but I decided uh, that I would do that this time because I have started actually punching my holes 
through the outside of the book punching in rather than from the inside punching out because I don't like that you know how the the chipboard kind of sticks through I don't want that showing on the outside of my spine so I'm just doing it from the outside in and since normally I actually mark where I'm going to punch my holes with a pencil like on the inside of the book uh, I don't want to do that on the outside so that's why I'm doing the template so that's one of the things that's changed about the way I bind journals is that I am now using a template and um, it's very very simple it's just a piece of uh, file folder it's actually two layers of file folder and um, I measured it on center so just at one inch and then at a quarter inch going out so I've got a quarter inch on each side um, you know where there's no holes <laughs> anyway I I just quickly wanted to show you guys this anyway so this is turning into a long video as usual anyway so um, all of these journals that I'm doing are different heights okay some of them are like eight inches some are seven some are seven and a half so so that I didn't have to make a whole bunch of templates I just did one that was you know longer than all of them and then I'm seriously just kind of eyeballing how I set this how I you know center it on there it doesn't have to be perfectly up to the bottom or to the top I'm just kind of making sure that it's um, somewhere in the center you know what I mean so okay so I'm gonna fold the the back of the book up a little bit and just press that against it just to make sure that it's uh, that it's straight okay and then I'm actually working with two awls because um, I don't like using clips they just they just irritate me and they get in the way um, so I'm gonna take one of the awls and I'm just gonna punch it all the way through the cover in the center there and that's just gonna hold it in place while I punch the holes on the bottom um, so I'm just gonna go from one side to the other punch all my holes Okay, and then I'm going to put the all in the center hole there. Take this one out and finish punching these. Um, you just want to make sure that it's not shifting from side to side. And you kind of got to hold it snug. You know, put, put some pressure on it while you're doing this. Otherwise, they will kind of shift side to side. <clears throat> um, if you don't have two alls, just, you know, maybe take your needle. Put your needle in I could pick it up you could just use your needle to hold it in place um, or some other kind of pokey thing you know because that way it can't shift side to side know what I'm saying okay um, oh and what I'm using here is just layers of fun foam that I hot glued together and I think this is like six layers of fun foam so I've been using this for a long time lots of holes this is the second one I've actually ever had to make the the other one got so many holes in it that it started like being almost flat anyway okay so got my holes punched and so you can see what I mean about the hole so I don't um, I used to punch from the inside out and then you you know I wind up with these little raised pieces where the holes got punched through and so by punching from the outside in it's perfectly smooth and I just I just think it looks nicer and it's like smoother you know anyway so I'm gonna take my cover turn it horizontally this way and then I've got all my signatures here got everything all rubber banded together okay so I'm just gonna take that book block basically and um, set it on the cover make sure it's straight this way and then I've got a little bit of space at the top and a little bit of space at the bottom. I generally make my pages about the same height as my book with maybe like a quarter of an inch at the top and bottom. Um, I just like the way that that looks. Um, anyway, so I just set them on there like that. Take a Sharpie. And it's nice to rubber band the book block together so that these these that's another thing I started doing that I didn't used to do 
um, if you just put a rubber band around them, then they won't shift around on you, so you don't have to stress about it so much. Anyway, and then I'm just going to mark a little dot, um, just looking at where I've got my holes punched. I'm just making a little dot on each signature where I'm going to be punching my holes. And I just mark the bottom one first and then just work my way up. Okay, so these all have a little black dot on them, but um, so see, so you can see the little dots. So that's where those are going to get punched. Um, and then I'll take this, I'll take the rubber band off and um, I'll turn this upside down so that the last signature is on the top. Okay, and then I'm also using... Um, book corners on these because a lot of these book covers are you know they're old they've been around they've been around the block and the corners are pretty worn and some of them are actually kind of flimsy so I just wanted to give them a little bit of strength and plus I think they look really nice so I thought I would just show you my method of putting on uh, book corners super easy um, these I get on Amazon uh, Tim Holtz sells some book corners that are pretty much exactly like this. They might be a little bigger. I'm not sure, but, um, I buy these on Amazon. I think, I think it's a bag of like a hundred or something for like seven ninety nine. They're, they're not expensive. Um, and again, those I will link in the description as well. Um, they're, they're nice because they'll accommodate a relatively thick cover. Um, I wouldn't use these on really thin covers, I don't think. I mean, I don't know, maybe, but I've never tried them on really thin covers. But um, one thing that's kind of cool about the book corners is that, <clears throat> or about these ones, is that the very edge of the part that goes on the inside, the part that goes, that kind of grabs onto the inside of the book cover, it's got a little bit, it's kind of turned under ever so slightly. So it sort of grabs on to the, to the book cover itself. Um, anyway, so this is so easy, you guys. I've seen people doing this with like a hammer and with a mallet or, you know, special tools or whatever. And you really don't, don't need that. All you need is a pair of flat nose pliers. Um, these, these actually come with Teflon, uh, with these little pieces of Teflon that slide over the metal part. Um, but I noticed that those usually come off, like they, I don't know, they just come off really easily. So I just cover them with masking tape. And that just adds a little bit more padding also. Um, you do want to use something like this because you don't want to put... Um, you don't want to mar the metal. Like you don't want to put little dents in the metal when you're when you're putting your book corners on. You want them to remain smooth, right? So um, if you don't have the Teflon flat nose pliers, just use any kind of plier that has a relatively flat nose, right? Where it's flat here, and just wrap um, masking tape around it. You know, and you can kind of make your own. Even even if you don't have some that are smooth, um, and say you have pliers that are like um, that have the little grooves in them on here, um, if you just wrap it with the masking tape, they won't leave marks on your book corners. Anyway, um, okay, so I'll just take the take the book corner. Make sure that that curved part is on the outside. That's that's what you want to see on the front of the book. So you turn it upside down and then um, I'm just going to hold it on with my this finger here. Um, so you want to start at the corner and work your way out the edges. So you don't want to start down here. Um, it's hard to explain why, but um, you wind up actually... It, it, it shifts around too much if you do that. So basically, you want to start at the corner. And I'm just doing one edge. I'm not, I'm not pinching the whole corner. I'm just pinching one side, okay? So I'm just going to flatten down 
that one that one side see the other one is still the other one is still um, I haven't flattened down that the other one the top part just this just that side one and then just give it a squeeze all the way down and you know it's not gonna it's not going anywhere and then and then I'll do the same thing with the other side of the, the corner so I start at the corner and work my way down and sometimes I'll go back and actually give that corner a little squeeze if it's kind of poking up a little bit but so that's how I put on the book corners and I've never had anybody tell me that they've come off or that they've had a problem with them so um, <clears throat> anyway so that's how I do the book corners just do one side at a time And make sure they're nice and smooth. Start at the corner and work your way down. If for some reason one of them kind of starts poking out just a little bit, if you get like a little bit of a gap right there, just take your pliers and kind of tap on it like that and that they'll they'll fix it so I don't glue these on I know some some people uh, glue them on I used to glue them I used to put glue underneath you know before I squeezed them with the pliers but honestly I I just don't think it's it's not necessary to do that um, they, they stay, they stay on unless somebody's trying to pull it off, you know, so anyway, so I got my corners on and then <clears throat> when I'm binding, I'll just pull off. I don't measure how many lengths I need necessarily, like with a ruler or anything. I just kind of go, okay, that's one signature, two signatures, <laughs> three signatures, four signatures. I, I usually don't pull off more than, uh, if I'm binding a book that has five signatures, then I will, but I know I have seven here, so I'm just going to go four, and then I'll have to thread my needle again uh, with enough thread for the remaining three, okay? So stick my needle in there, take one of my signatures, open it up, just kind of let it open naturally to the center, and I am doing envelopes in the center of most of these signatures. So um, I'm going to be stitching from the inside out. Um, so my string is going to be on the inside of this envelope. It's not going to be on the outside of the book. So I'm just holding on to this with my fingers. I'm not putting paper clips on it. I'm not using, you know, binder clips or anything like that. I'm just, just holding on to it. And then I'm going to punch through that top hole punch through the bottom hole and while that's still in the foam I'm gonna kinda grab a hold of my pages and I'm gonna pull that up so that the all is still stuck in there okay and then I kinda wiggle it just a little bit to make sure that the pages are lined up straight pull the pull the all out from the back and then I make sure that I can actually see through that hole and and then I know it's going to be easy to get my needle in there. Okay, so put my needle in and then I'm just kind of balancing it like that on my hand. And, and I'll go into the bottom holes on the spine at the bottom. The first set in the back. Okay, so pull the, pull the needle up as far as I can. And then I'll actually use these pliers again to pull it through. Okay, and then I leave, oh, maybe six, eight inches um, of tail. And then I'll put this back up through the correct holes and then into the signature on the other side. And the whole time I'm just holding on to stuff. I'm not clipping it together or making it like a complicated 
uh, process. It's, it's, I don't know. It doesn't have to be complicated. I guess that's what I'm saying. I've watched a lot of book binding videos and sometimes it just looks super complex. Anyway. So then I just do like a regular, like a square knot on the inside. Um, sometimes when I'm doing lots and lots of journals, like a couple weeks ago, I actually bound like 54 journals and I actually did have to put band-aids on my fingers because I pull this pretty tight. So, you know, if you have that kind of problem or you're doing lots and lots and lots of journals, um, maybe just put a band-aid on your fingers <laughs> anyway. So that's the first signature done. Okay, so then the next step in the whole process is going to be I'll go back through every journal and I'll seal up these envelopes so it kind of hides that string and um, and then I can do whatever else, you know, I want. But, but that's basically, you know, how I bind all of my journals, especially like the Reader's Digest and things like that. So that see the envelope is open and I'll just lay it down hook my top hole, hook my bottom hole, make sure I've got all the pages, straighten it up, insert the needle, and then I just start going into the next set of holes. Pull this through with the pliers if you have to, and then into the very next hole and through the back of the signature. I can do this while I'm sitting in bed watching TV too. So, I mean, it just doesn't take that much, uh, that many tools really. And all you need is just a little bit of a surface, like maybe a breakfast tray or something, sit in bed and bind books. Um, but these signatures are very sturdy, like, you know, they're, they're stable. And, you know, if you have a lot of like, uh, really short pages, like, like this, you know, you do kind of want to make sure that they're at least going to be bound in one, one of those holes. Um, <clears throat> sometimes I do use <clears throat> the three hole pamphlet stitch. Usually I do that if I'm going to be knotting um, if I'm not doing a lot of, uh, envelopes, I don't, I don't know why, but, or gosh, I don't know what, what my reasoning is for doing a three hole pamphlet stitch or not. I mean, honestly, the two holes has always worked fine. Maybe sometimes if I'm not doing as many journals, I'll do the three hole, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe I guess some of the ones that I've done where I've done three hole, um, it's because I'm trying to avoid certain parts of the cover or something. I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I can't tell you why I would use it or not. You know, I, it's just maybe just depends on my mood or something. Um, anyway, so I'm just pulling off those signatures from the top of the pile. Um, since I know it's upside down, they're in order. And then, and then I start stitching them in, starting at the very back of the book. And it goes pretty quick, you know. I mean, I think it takes me maybe 10 minutes to, to bind one of these this way. And I just broke my needle. <laughs> just broke the needle. Anyway, so I've got to grab a new needle, but um, it's because of the pliers. Anyway, so I'm going to set this back down stick the all in it so it doesn't get all messed up. Anyway, so I'm going to go find a new needle and continue. I've got probably 10 more of these to do. And, um, oh, in case you're wondering about the needle, I do use, um, I do use kind of a sharp needle. Um, I know a lot of people use like more, more of like a blunt, ed, blunt end needle. Um, I, I, I don't know why exactly I, I have been using these. Maybe it's because I had a whole bunch of them, but I'm using a sharp needle. So be careful. Don't poke yourself. Anyway, 
I gotta go find another needle. Um, anyway, so that's, I'll put a link in the description uh, to, to anything that, you know, I'm using that I actually buy on Amazon. Um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to uh, send me an email or leave a comment and I'll try to answer it. Um, yeah, but that's it. I think what I might do on some of these also is go back and attach some buttons on the spines too, just because I think that looks really cool. But, um, yeah. So anyway, that's Jessica's new kind of like revised lazy binding method. So anyway, I love you guys. Okay. Bye for now.